hi welcome um somebody gave me a really good idea for a video it was somebody that i met on instagram who um is joining the national down syndrome adoption network very soon which i'm very excited about um and i was really excited for this idea because this is something that i want to remember because i'm like on the other side of it now and so i want to remember the things sorry um that she wants me to talk about and so the video that what I'm going to be talking about today are the six things I wish I had known before I started the adoption process. And this is like really important to me because like I said, I've kind of gone through it. I'm by no means done with the adoption process. Um, and I really want to try to like document and remember the things that I have experienced and felt and learned during all of this. And then maybe perhaps if somebody has, if somebody watches this and, and learns a thing or two, that would be great. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna talk about. Six things I thought of, I wanted to do five, but there were six, I couldn't cut it down. So I have six things I wish I had known before I started the adoption process. Okay, I'm gonna start with the hard one first because I'm an optimist and I don't like to end with hard stuff. So I'm gonna start with the sad, like bad one first. Um, so the first one that I wish I had known is that there is still a stigma around adoption. And the reason I wish I had known that is because I think I went into the adoption process going, it's 2019, I like to believe that we have kind of evolved as a society, and I liked to believe that society didn't view adoption as a consolation prize, or exclusively as a plan B, and that I, th I really truly thought that our society would have thought of adoption at this point in the world as a very natural way to grow a family. That's not the case, unfortunately. Um, I was shocked, and actually still am shocked, at how many people um, were surprised that we were adopting considering our story did not come from infertility. And that bummed me out that in 2019, we are still as a society thinking that you only adopt if you can't have biological children of your own, which I get. Like I, to I totally understand that for a lot of people, adoption is plan B. It was not what they pursued initially. And I totally respect and, and love those people. But for us, that was just not our plan, like plan B. It was plan A for us. It really shocked me, and it still does, that our society doesn't celebrate adoption like it should. And it, it makes me really sad. It really, really does that um, when we started this, I was really ready to kind of, you know, answer questions. We welcomed questions. We wanted questions. But a lot of, like, a lot of people, and, and never directly, like, never... Um, straight on saying like you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do this but a lot of people said things like but don't you want your own kids and um, what about X Y and Z and just had all these reasons that we shouldn't do it which is fine you know we totally get that but the idea of people saying have your own kids was really hard because um, we knew this would be our own kid so you still, if you are adopting, you still will have to do some work in educating people that it is a natural way to grow a family, it is not always a plan B, and that you are just as much of a family and you are just as much of a parent if you've adopted your child. It makes you no less of a parent if your body didn't biologically create this person. Um, and you will be made to feel that way. Unfortunately, that's just the truth of it. I have, I certainly have been made to feel that way. So, um, yeah, I wish I had known that I would have to start educating and advocating pretty quickly because there was not, I was hoping that our society was further along and honestly, our society needs to do better and, um, make this more normal. But unfortunately, that's not the case quite yet. The second thing kind of ties into it, but it's actually a good thing too. The second thing I wish I had known is that you will feel coexisting opposite emotions at a thousand percent. And I think that might be parenthood, but my experience into parenthood is through adoption. So I couldn't believe the degree with which I felt scared, nervous, thrilled, sad, like all of these high intense emotions at six million percent like it wasn't like I was a little sad and a lot of excited I was really sad because adoption is born through heartbreak and it is like created through a really devastating situation usually it's, it, you know so um really tremendously sad while also experiencing the greatest day of my life and those were at the same moment 
and at the exact same intensity. <laughs> and nobody really like explains that to you. <laughs> that, and you know, I'm an actor. My job is to like understand emotions and to, you know, comprehend those things. But I was not prepared for how strong I was going to feel every single emotion through this adoption process. There were times where I was so freaking excited I couldn't even think straight and then also so anxious that I could barely like get out of bed in the morning um through the whole thing so there wasn't like one instance that created it it was just a constant level of like I can't believe that I'm experiencing opposing emotions equally and I was not prepared for that so I wanted to share that <laughs> The third thing that I wish I had known was that the money of adoption is not as scary as it seems. So, yes, adoption is very expensive and that is very intimidating. It truly, truly, it was certainly scary for us. You know, we're young, we're actors, that's intimidating. But here's what I learned that I didn't know. And this is actually what I say about wedding planning too, is yes, it's very expensive. However, it's very rarely all due at one time. So yes, you'll have um, a big fee at the time of placement. That's going to be different. There's no way to ballpark that, right? But the other end of it, the other expensive end, is almost never due at one time. So you'll have this fee at this time and then this fee at this time. But it's almost never like you're saying, here's, I, here's $30,000 right off the bat. Ours was not even $30,000, our adoption. But, you know, that's, it's not all due at one time. And so that makes it easier than you think because you can, A, another thing, this is like a point three A, is there are grants that will help make your adoption accessible financially. We received a couple of grants that helped. Um, and we also did some fundraising, which I am going to talk about in a different video. Our community was very helpful to us through all of this. And so... Um, you're able to plan things out a little bit better. It is not all, it is not this massive amount of money that is due on one singular day. And there are going to be different rules and, you know, procedures for different agencies and different states and stuff. But the big numbers that you read about on like websites when you're Googling adoption, don't let that number be the reason you don't adopt. Sincerely don't. It's not as big and scary as it seems because of the grants that you can apply for. If you're gonna fundraise, not everybody does, but if you're going to, you have time because it's not all due at one time. And that was a huge relief for me to learn through this. And so if somebody's watching this and they're saying the only reason I'm not adopting is the money, I'm here to tell you, start it because the money is is never going to prohibit you. There are ways around the financial element to make it less scary. If money is stopping you from adoption, don't let it. Talk to me. I'll talk to you. There's ways around it. This is number thing number four that I want to talk about that I didn't know. And this was hard for me as a type A anxious person. Nobody can tell you exactly what's going to happen. And sure, that's true everywhere, right? But for me, I was very nervous because I wanted to know when things were going to get done and what things were going to look like and when money would be due and at what time is X, Y, and Z going to happen. And I was asking these people who do this full time for a living, you know, and they even would say, we can't answer that. We don't know yet because there are so many unknowns in the world of adoption that a lot of your questions are very, very good questions that people sometimes don't have the answers to. And so a really good lesson to learn right away is that sometimes the best answer you're going to get is I don't know right now because nobody, there's nobody who's going to be able to tell you here's what it's going to look like because 30 things could go wrong at any given moment or change or the states could do something or a piece of paper could have a spelling error. There's so many intricacies that patience and acceptance of accepting that the answer is sometimes I don't know is something I really had to work on during the process. So I wanted to make that very clear that sometimes the answer is I don't know. Thing number five. This is true of parenthood too, I think, but adoption does not make you immune to the normal stressors of parenthood. So a lot of people would say that to me, like, you know, when, when he was really little and he was an easy baby, but still he's a baby. So there's hard work that goes with it. You know, people go, man, you chose this. 
And, and that was like a, you're not allowed to feel stress or to feel overwhelmed or anything because you chose this. That is adamantly false. <laughs> yes, I chose this baby. And yes, I chose a baby with different abilities and with different needs. And yes, I chose parenthood, but so does somebody else who biologically has a baby. Sometimes, not always, right? I understand that. But people who choose parenthood in this way are still choosing parenthood. And if you're a parent, you know it's not easy, right? So even though I signed a lot of papers and Kyle and I went through a lot of work to get our child, it does not mean that the hard moments aren't hard. And it does not mean that the stress is not real. And it does not mean that we aren't allowed to feel like it is hard for us. And I think that kind of goes back to number one too. But a lot of people, I was really shocked to hear that. People were shocked to hear that I was having stress and things like that. Because they assumed that because I chose this, that it wasn't hard. And that's not true. Um... So just because you adopt and you do choose that, and again, that's true if you choose to have a biological child too, you can choose to get pregnant and you can choose to be a parent in that way and that's still hard too, even though you chose that. So they're very much the same thing. Um, but choosing to adopt a baby does not mean that it's easier to be a parent. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is, again, optimist, glass is always half full. It is not all hard. Even the paperwork part was like very hard, but it's not all impossible. And when I would share with people that we were adopting kind of at the beginning, their reactions would be like, ooh, man, good luck. That's tough. That's really, really tough. And yes, it was tremendously difficult. It still is. However, not all of it is hard. The paperwork, some of it was pretty easy to accomplish. And the feeling of success after you finished all the paperwork was worth it. Um, <laughs> And yes, going to California for 12 days was tremendously hard, but you know, we were also in California in Michigan, like in March. So in the whole process, there are moments of joy and there are moments of, of goodness. And you end up with a child a lot of times, hopefully, um, in our, in our case, you know, we did. And I hope everybody else gets that too in the adoption world, but it is not all negative and it is not all uphill. It really truly isn't. There are moments of relief. There are moments of light. And if your outcome is as good as ours, and I just wish that on any human being in the whole wide world, it is worth it. So that is that. That is six things that I wish I had known beforehand. Um, I'm still learning every single day. <laughs> I'm still learning about this adoption world. Um, and I'm not done yet. We're not finished with this whole entire universe yet. So, um, yeah. I love making videos like this because it is not only good for me to remember these things, but I think if anybody else watches this, it will help. And I hope it does. So that's what I've got. I'm going to try to make a few more videos. We'll see. I've got a baby. He's asleep. So that's all I've got. I hope you're having a great rainy Monday. I hope it's not raining where you are. It is where I am. It's June and I'm in a hoodie. So that's that. Um, I'm going to go watch my baby sleep on the monitor for a little bit longer, and I'll see you later. Bye!